What did I say in my last Game Theory reaction? I said that we were going to be getting the Game Theory 4 step closer very soon. And it just so happens to be today. Also, if you missed that reaction to the science of FNAF, it's linked in the description. So once again, with a brand new Fazbear Fright book now out, comes a brand spankin' new Game Theory on it. And, just like all the past Game Theories on Fazbear Fright, I haven't read it, yay. I'm just way behind at this point, there's no way I'm catching up. I'm sorry. I don't know a whole lot about this book, again, because I have not read it yet, uh, but I have heard a lot of good things about it. So hopefully I can still enjoy it with all of these spoilers I am now throwing my way. Also, today is August 1st, and in exactly one week, it is FNAF's 6th anniversary. There's gonna be a lot of stuff happening that day. We're probably gonna get a teaser or a trailer for the upcoming game. Darko is releasing his new song. But the main attraction is that I will be hosting a celebration livestream as we do every single year. So if you don't wanna miss that, I suggest that you subscribe. We are so gosh dang close to 6,000 subscribers, it would be great to hit it before FNAF's sixth anniversary. See what I did there? 6K, sixth anniversary? It's pretty nice. All right, so let's finally hop into this game theory. So this is called Game Theory FNAF Another Mystery Solved. And based off of the title and the thumbnail, I'm guessing we have finally learned the identity of the older brother in FNAF 4. So I am very excited about that. Let's hop right into it. Let's all smash the like at the same time. Three, two, one, go, 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 go. All right. Here we go, Game Theory FNAF Another Mystery Solved. Let's find out about that older brother. But first off, we got a showtime to attend. Uh, is this Foxy's Cove? Is this Pirate's Cove? Probably, based off of the stores. Uh-oh. I don't know if I would press that. I, I have a sneaking suspicion. You can be a pirate. So Foxy wants to turn me into a pirate. Okay. I don't know about that. Ooh. Ah. What a pleasant start. I'm losing an eye and an arm. Welcome to Game, game Theory. theory. Show that is, without exaggeration, thinking of reaching out to Scott Cawthon so that we can jointly buy Chuck E. Cheese's quickly dying restaurant franchise so we can transform them into what they were always meant to be, real world FNAF experiences. Heck, they've already Don't got know about that. pizza taken care of. We could probably even sell the idea to YouTube Originals and make a whole series Not a bad of idea. transforming the pizzerias into horror-themed dining experiences, which would also help mitigate the cost of doing all that. No joking here, Scott. This is something we absolutely Let my pizzeria. Can. That'd make a great <laughs> Netflix uh, I've show. I've created your games before Game in real Lab. life, and they seem to be pretty well received. So between my theater background and your, well, oh boy. you know, your gobs of money and masterminding of the IP, I think we can make Let's something that's really cool. And yeah, the reason I'm bringing it up here is so fans can start talking about the idea both here we and need on FNAF in real life. How excited they are for this to happen. Anyway, yeah, let me just leave know. it at. We I've talked about email, it before, and I I'm kind of split on it. Who knows, you've probably already bought it at this point. You're just waiting to reveal that fact to the world. God, Speaking can you imagine? Of Chuck E. Cheese restaurants, the grand pappy of FNAF, I actually have a theory in the works about those pizza Right, I talked about this on Twitter. Enjoy. The episode will Food be theory. in a few weeks on my newest theory channel, Food Theory, which, if you haven't checked out yet, you It's actually kind of fun. Link I'm not going to lie. Description. Yes, it sounds like a joke. No, <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's actually kind of funny. episodes about Chuck E. Cheese on the way, but also horror episodes, like how the ghost of KFC's Colonel Sanders has been cursing people for decades. I'm yes, sorry, who? It's a real thing that we are The curse of Colonel. It's the same science, math, and over-research okay. that we do over here, except, you know, on real-life topics. And for anyone who's hesitant to Again, check out Again, if you want to see that Chuck E. Cheese food theory reaction, Jack here subscribe. Over Twitter, who said he started out skeptical, but watched the episodes and immediately Honestly, got that is my reaction, too. we over half a million subscribers in the first 24 hours, and we're getting it's really, insane, really, really close to that million 
million in these first hey. weeks. So please, please, please help us Congrats. reach that milestone in record time. Show the world how passionate we theorists are by shattering Bunch of bananas. record. And hey, FNAF even already has made an appearance on the show. It's in every yeah. single intro of Food Theory. So subscribe to Food Theory today to get your daily dose of brain food. In Honestly, sticky, exotic sticky butters for FNAF Food Theory? So I think that'd, that'd be a cool idea. About this new channel has really helped us all out. So thank you guys for your support. Thank you for your subscription. And I can't wait to deliver you more. It's Epic. been a lot of work, but it's really fun. All right. Yeah, I think it's been making it for like two or three years. Set of lore reveals. Early Here we go. The latest Fazbear Fright book. Right here, boy, shelves, And even though it no is a super forgettable name, the stories inside of it are epic. Not just epic. because they're some of the most gruesome in the series. I oh, mean, God. page one literally starts with a dream sequence where a kid's eye gets popped by Foxy's hook. But because Fun. of the lore drops that are happening in this oh, thing. Oh, God. Are we are about to get massive huge. spoilers? Until this point, the Fazbear Frights books have given us interesting concepts to chew on, fleshing out the no, world no, of FNAF no. and giving us new insights into events that we already had a pretty good handle on. It's mm -hmm. been useful, certainly, but nothing too earth-shattering. Animatronics can have people stuffed inside of them. Confirmed Ooh, outright book thought. one. People can have animatronics stuffed inside of them. Confirmed in book three. Everything is powered by human agony. The missing yep. children's incident probably yep. happened in 1985. Animatronics Maybe. can steal identities. Humans oh, can be as they do. with animatronics. Golden of course, Blood reasonable. Multiple souls trapped inside of him. Ghosts because why wouldn't he? From their animatronic prisons to lure more people to Makes them. sense. But there has been a lot <laughs> Jesus. across all of these stories, hence why I've been covering these books so much. But step closer is yeah, more covers are attacking some all of them. lingering questions still in existence from these games. The ones presented to us by the two most frustrating games in the franchise, FNAF Let's 4 go. and FNAF 6. Questions that are still hotly debated by the FNAF community. So today oh boy. we're looking at the first of those debates. The ones related to FNAF 4. Oh, I'm so excited. What those answers mean for the rest of the series. Today, Let's go. we confirm the identity of this guy. I called it! Older brother, Foxy Bro. Foxy quick, Bro! Before we get to the meat of this theory, let's quickly speed our way I'm honestly through. so Probably excited. The least important story of this new trio, the middle one titled Dance With Me. In it, we cover Casey. Isn't it about Bloa? She's coming from a tragic childhood. She lives on the street, picking pockets and nabbing purses. One day, she robs a mother and a young girl outside of Circus Baby's Pizza World, which we're told has itself a big red door. Woo! Potentially important detail alert. Big anyway, red door that she nabs is, is a, a big red alert. Glasses. When Casey puts them on, she sees a hologram of Ballora spinning oh, in the distance. Oh, that's creepy. Weirded out by this, she has other people try the glasses on and no one else manages to see Ballora. From uh -oh. that point onward, each time she puts on the glasses, the hologram gets closer and closer, which begins to freak her out to the point of her leaving town and trying to put her life back together in hopes that it gets Ballora Not a bad to idea. Alone. A couple cities and failed jobs I doubt later, it does, Casey though. Casey eventually decides to return the stolen item items to the mother and the daughter, hoping that it'll make amends. The oh, family welcomes her in and forgives her, but when the little girl Isabella puts the glasses on, she not only sees Ballora, but she immediately begins dancing. It's a very vague ending because it's unclear whether Ballora, who was one step away from getting Casey, instead what? nabs the girl because she's the one who puts the glasses on next, and the dancing is the girl becoming possessed, or if it's the girl just excited to be dancing alongside one of her favorite characters, Ballora. Hmm. Anyway, there's not a whole lot to talk about with this one. The technology is super strange. Freddy's is apparently advanced enough to have holographics that work in cheap cars. The heck is going on? Kids. That would be strange enough, but there's also some extra weirdness that the holograms can interact with the physical world. We see throughout the story that this Ballora hologram kicks up leaves and causes them to swirl around her. To quote from the story, there was Ballora, pirouetting among the colorful fall leaves. As she spun, the bright leaves were sucked into her vortex. For a few seconds, Casey what? admired the beauty, but then she thought, wait, if Ballora is just a picture a hologram then how could dude she that is honestly so creepy around? it didn't make sense welcome to the world of being a fnaf we Here's need another Casey. science make video sense. austin to get that one tattooed on your forehead but in all seriousness Doesn't it does sense. raise a big question is she actually a hologram or huh. just invisible and the glasses are somehow revealing her it's unclear today i'm gonna be talking a lot about those weird little details that just seem so oddly Tiny specific details. for a book to call out that it feels like the book is trying to tell us something and this oh my god like of course it's well, like, Scott, man. spend a lot of time trying to figure it out. To my knowledge, holographic or invisible animatronics haven't really been a thing yet in the franchise, so we'll just have to cross that bridge when it becomes important. Hmm. Unless, oh damn it, it might be a phantom animatronic. No, <laughs> no. They don't oh. interact with the real world, do they? Last point to be made about this story, though, is its recurring theme of mothers. I, and is mothers. he not going to talk about the phantoms then? Okay. Casey is her troubled relationship with Maybe her a theory for another time. Part in how her life ended up the way it did. Casey, throughout the story, is also 
also visited by an older woman at a bus station that gives her grandmotherly advice. She's saved from the police by another elderly woman. She makes mm -hmm. amends with that mother and daughter that have a relationship that she envies. I mean, it could be me thinking too much about this. Big surprise. But it doesn't feel like a coincidence <laughs> that Ballora is the main animatronic featured in a story about motherly relationships. I had a theory a mm. long time ago, two years ago. That I remember a lot of people were like, there's no way. Often. Not in any sort of creepy way. Get your mind out of the gutters. I mean, that she represents the wife that <laughs> William Afton lost or divorced him or most likely that he abandoned in the aftermath of his daughter getting clawed to death by baby. I mean, just look at the song that Ballora sings in Sister Location. Why do you hide inside your walls? Such a creepy song. An empty tomb, God, aka so the bedroom of our tragically deceased child. William this is bringing back memories of that theory, damn. Even deeper into his work. It's Little something Joe. that William's partner hey, Henry bud. does in the original novel trilogy. Actually, no, that was the magician, daughter, I'm sorry. He shuts out the rest of the world, hiding behind his walls and obsessing over his work to try and bring her back. And so when William does this in the games, his wife is left alone and probably ends up leaving him. As such, as some sort of coping mechanism, William recreates her in animatronic form, depicting her with perpetual perpetually shut eyes because to William she was blind to what Dude. needed to be done to rebuild the family. Blind to the fact Great that his work details, was so important. Great details if that's the she case. She wanted to move on, to do frivolous things like sing and spin and dance, or at least that's how he felt from his perspective. William Afton was mired in his own misery of loss. Like I said, it's Getting a bit of a real nostalgic right here, boys. Talked about before, but I thought the connection between Ballora and mothers in this story was particularly interesting and worth calling out. Anyway, onward to the real story I want to address today, Step Closer, Step which closer. isn't just sparking new theories Theories, but is straight up confirming stuff that we've argued about for years. I'm ready. In it, we meet Pete, a 16-year-old who, due to their parents' divorce, has to babysit his little brother, Chuck the Chump. One day, while watching Tough. him at a Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria, Pete, annoyed about having to be the responsible one, decides to scare Chuck a little by taking him Not backstage to see an out-of-service Foxy. Pete fires up the machine, and Chuck runs away, leaving Pete alone to get seemingly hypnotized by Foxy's performance. Not again. A performance that repeats one line over and over. Over. You can be a pirate, but first you'll have to lose an eye and an arm. And from there, you can probably no. guess what happens. Over the next no. few days, he gets into multiple accidents that put either his eye or his arm in danger. A scalpel nearly hits his eye in science class. A butcher uh. knife almost chops off his hand at the store. A bus uh. shoots out at him from a new uh. construction what site. The? He gets hooked in the face by a fishing line, and he almost loses a hand to a Chinese finger trap at the school. What the freak have these books become? And come to the realization that Pete needs to face down Foxy to break some curse. Pete rushes to Freddy's, but in his panic, he's hit by an oncoming truck and killed. Out of nowhere. It's this awful, awful reveal that you absolutely do not see coming because you feel so bad for this kid. You're like, oh, Jeez. he's apologized to his brother. They have a good relationship. They have a plan for getting Pete out of this after him being brutalized for the better Damn, part of Damn, Scott, the, the hell are you writing? The story and then, bam, it just ends. And that would be where the story ends, except for one thing. Pete is still alive. Of course he is. We pick up back in the hospital where Pete's soul is trapped inside of his own dead body. Pete is an organ donor. Against his will, I might add. Thanks a lot for signing me up for that one, Mom. Thanks, ma'am. Emergency request for, you guessed it, an eye wow. and a hand. Pete is forced to helplessly watch as his body is That's not an organ, though. Surgeons. Wait, hold on. Like I said, <laughs> hold on, wait, This hold story on. is shocking. But what's even more shocking is the lore confirmation that we get in this thing. Pete's story 100% confirms for us that yes. Foxy Bro, yes. the old yes. kid from FNAF 4 who repeatedly traumatizes his younger brother before eventually getting him chomped in the jaws of Fredbear, that is undeniably Michael Afton. Let's go! 100% no doubt. It's something that we strongly suspected for a while, and something that later evidence started to throw into question, but this story happening five Let's years go. after that game's initial release yes. finally clears it up for us. Obviously, Woo. there are some superficial similarities here. Pete has a younger brother who's scared of the animatronics, just like Foxy Bro has the crying child, his younger brother who's scared of the animatronics. Pete is connected to Foxy throughout the story, just like 
like the brother in the feels so weird to have that done after so long just like it seems William and Mrs. Afton are leaving the brothers alone to care for their younger siblings at one point in the story Pete's hand starts to turn purple which points us back to Michael purple guy physically turning purple I shouldn't do that I hurt my throat Pete should be dead but isn't which exactly I should be dead words but I'm Michael Afton father it's me Michael I should be dead, but, but I'm, I'm not. not. But all of it is yes. just a bunch of weak parallels between Foxy Bro and Michael, and Michael and Pete, and Foxy Bro and Pete. How do we know for sure that all three of these characters You got more evidence, man? One word, gum. People gum. ask me a lot how I come up with these theories. And oh, I remember that from the logbook. That just stick he out chews on gum. Off. For the author or game designer to include as though they're purposely seeding these details out there to <laughs> try and signal something to us and in this particular story the odd character detail of pete is that he chews gum a lot let's Before, go or he's chewing watermelon gum while watching watermelon gum Later, when he's scared by the foxy animatronic the book makes mention of him swallowing that gum okay that's fine Oof, that's a one-off tough, thing no tough. big deal but later on the way to the butcher shop we're told that he quote pops a wad of watermelon gum into his mouth on the boat fishing with his dad he wishes he had brought his My man loves gum. gum. It is mentioned a lot in this short story. Enough that it sparked my fear senses and made me flag it Slide to look into later. Now, obviously, at no point during nom, FNAF nom, 4 or heck any of the games do we see a character that'd be funny, though. chewing gum. That'd be silly, but that's not the only place that Slide we see these characters. Slide 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 Slide. Let me direct your attention back to the FNAF uh, Let's go. Book. Who knew that a book with dabbing Chica as an actual selling feature would become the single hey, most did that in 2020. item for lore-solving of this franchise? For those of you who Bonnie. don't remember this little gem, it's the log Get book here, originally Ed. owned by Mike, as we see on the title page, that helped us to solve for Cassidy's name. And hey, you know it, memories. Today, it's also the thing that's going to now reveal to us Michael Afton's Scott true identity. Scott is such identity. a genius, page right? 49, quote, list 10 bad habits you'd like to break. Number one, gum. chewing gum excessively. I mean, Excessive. There it is, plain as day. Pete chews gum excessively. Michael Afton chews gum excessively. Pete eventually turns purple and comes back to life after being dead. Uh, Michael uh. Afton eventually turns purple and comes to life after being dead. Pete is an older brother who scares his younger Let's sibling go. using Foxy. Foxy bro in FNAF 4 is an older brother who scares his younger sibling with Foxy. Pete equals Michael and Michael equals FNAF 4 yes! Foxy bro. Done. Five Another years. Another character identity locked. This detail has been sitting in the logbook for years just waiting oh to be God. used kind of impressive well done there scott well done and this confirmation got hand it to him thing we need to know about michael's motivation for the rest of the game series he's avenging his brother's death the one that he made happen when golden freddy appearances are accompanied by the words it's me it is literally Ugh. the younger brother saying it's me i'm here to his older brother but of course of course of course uh -oh. it is never that easy this no. same security logbook Book. This thing that has been Don't so you do this to solving me. so many mysteries of this franchise raises just as many challenges. Because sure, here it just Toss. confirmed the Foxy Bro connection, Yay. but then it also has lines like these. Page 103, the party was for you. Page 75, does he still talk to you? In reference to psychic friend Fredbear. Page oh 23, was your favorite childhood toy a plastic purple telephone? Page 20, what do you remember? And most troublesome of all, page 31, do you remember? Remember your name? All of these questions Pog. seem pointed to the crying child. The party was for him. His favorite toy was the purple telephone. Fred Bear did talk to him and never to Foxy Bro as far as we know. In fact, these are the exact questions that got us to throw <sighs> the Foxy Michael connection away so many years ago. Why would the spirit in this book, Cassidy, be telling Mike things that are very clearly true of the crying child? If uh, Mike was indeed the older brother the Scott. entire time. Like this latest Fazbear Fright story just confirm for us it doesn't what are you sense, doing man which is why now we have to solve Oops. these last two questions what do you remember do you remember your name okay I mean, yeah i do remember my name it's mike i wrote mike on the first page of the book but i crossed it out unless mike never truly was my name oh the no question that we're left with and the question i pose to you and that i still need time to think through he's is, gonna put it in a part two and how did he forget it was he the bite of 87 victim is was that, that the how he lost his memory did some sort of other 
trauma caused Maybe. the memory loss? And more importantly, is there some other strange connection between Michael and the crying child? Like, seriously, why would the book say that the party was for Michael when mm. FNAF 4 clearly tells us that it's not? I can't believe that this is just some sort of typo or something. This book is so precisely engineered to be the linchpin in too many mysteries of this franchise for that to be the case. So could that connection oh, between boy. two brothers be the reason why Michael's name might somehow be different? All theories for another day, my friends. But at least for now, oh, one boy. more confirmed step closer to getting the answer. Ha! Huh, he said the thing! So, so maybe that's the reason why the story step is closer. in fact called Step Closer. Because otherwise, that title for a story about a kid losing an eye and an arm just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Next time, we tackle Susie and her connections to FNAF 6. In oh, I forgot he was talking about FNAF 6. Food theory exists as a channel and you should subscribe to it. Help Definitely. Us a million if I remember, I'll link it. I know that you guys can help us do it. And if you Again, like what we do over check here, your cheese theory here, coming what soon. Over there too. Hopefully. So stick around on that channel. Hopefully I'm soon. having a blast with it. And like I said, if you're into videos about scary restaurants and pizza, well, we've got episodes coming out That's about me. both. The dark lore of KFC. And Let's go. Colonel Sanders. Is technically a sandwich. Link is on screen right now. It's a channel that's epic. Lots of cool stuff that you can drop in front of your friends and family. So no longer will they just be rolling your eyes when you talk about animatronic murder. Now true, you can blow true. their minds with stuff that they might actually understand and care about. So please like check pizza. it out. Please subscribe so that way we can get closer to the 1 million subscriber mark. And I'll see you all next week. Of course, I'm still here. So, you know, stick around for a little bit longer, please. Wow. After five long long years we finally know the identity of foxy bro with a little bit of you know exceptions but basically i'd like to think that this is what scott is trying to say of course again there are those tiny little details that don't match up but i am really really fascinated to know where matt is going to take this um i don't think he'll probably include it in the next video where he will cover a sushi and a pizzeria simulator but maybe he will i don't know but he does need some time to think about it as he says how fitting is it that not not too long ago we were celebrating fnaf 4's five year anniversary and now here we are today knowing one of the main characters' identity one of the main characters of the entire franchise michael afton it's insane you know i remember all those past theories and it really brought back nostalgia you know, watching this theory and finally, finally getting an answer to that question. It's really nice. Again, there are a few more questions that need answered, but you know, it's FNAF. It's always going to be like that. But this is, this is a huge weight off of our shoulders. And Matt is such an amazing guy for putting all of this together. Again, for the past nearly six years, coming up on six years, he's been here solving the lore like an absolute mad person, probably driving him into madness joke fully intended is that game coming out anyways i just want to say matt you're great and thank you for everything you've done for this community for the past nearly six years you are insane kind of doubt that he's gonna see this but you know what whatever thank you guys so much for being here and again subscribe so not only do you not miss the upcoming reactions to food theory about Chuck E. cheese also, the game theory for Susie in FNAF 6, but also the epic FNAF 6 year anniversary livestream that, that I will be hosting on August 8th, exactly one week from today. Also, this channel's third year anniversary is coming up on August 15th, so we will also be having a celebration for that. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye!